Hello, DigiDestins. This is Kyle D, better known as Rhyme My Avatar, and today we're going to go over how to play Digimon TCG on Tabletop Simulator. I actually play it a lot on my channel to help get better at the future coming format. So guys, let's dive right in and see what we can do with Tabletop Simulator. So first off, how you get Tabletop Simulator is quite easy actually. You go to steam.com, you enter in Tabletop Simulator. Right now they roughly go for 20 bucks a piece, or if you buy four simulator packs, that gets you about 60. So you get one free if you buy four. So you, if you have a bunch of friends that want to chip in, you got four friends, you can all buy it for 60 bucks, which is not bad. Or wait until it goes on sale. This usually goes regularly on sales, especially around the holiday season. You'll see this go down to like 10 bucks, and it really does improve how well you get to play the game. It allows you to play many card games, so it's not just as good as anything else. But at least you have multiple card games, and it's 10 bucks, and it's a really good system. But right now, if you want to buy it right now, 20 bucks. But wait for it to go on sale regularly. It does go down. So after you download the Tabletop Simulator, you want to download this automated Digimon card game 2020 mod. It's very important you download this because what's really nice about it lets you activate a lot of the mechanics pretty much automatically. There's buttons that just activate for what you need to do, and it's really useful. It has all the cards in it, and it's very easy to upload all the cards. So after you get the automated system, this is what you do. So that's what you want. And then you can also search for other tabletop workshops like Digimon. TCG it allows you to play all types of Digimon games. So there are a lot more, but a lot of people are working on other ones. So but I definitely recommend searching for the automated one to help you get started. If you don't get the automated one, it's gonna be a little more challenging because you gotta do everything yourself, drawing, ever. it's just a really complicated just scenario just to be able to draw all the cards and get what you need. So definitely don't waste your time on downloading just any willy-nilly events. So after you download it to the workshop, subscribe to this workshop and gain, downloaded the app next you need to go here to called carddev.com build your 50 card deck so get 50 cards we'll do this real quick nothing too crazy special get at least 50 cards there's no creation here i'll show you how to import a real deck shortly but it's a really easy process to get this all built. And let's get this. Can't go over 50. And then get your babies in here. Ta-da. So this is basically a rush build deck. So let's show the image of full cards. They'll show you all the cards you want. So going here allows you to be able to import it. So once you have a completed real deck, like so, I'm going to go to Deck Builder. So this is how you import it. So you take Tabletop Simulator thing, you copy all the text. So you want to highlight from bracket to bracket. You want the whole thing, if it allows you. Yep, hit Copy so that you have it close that out so save that copy and then we're gonna go into tabletop simulator itself let's bring up that bad boy front and center so after we have it saved for ourselves you want to create a room so this is how you're going to create a room so you want multiplayer you can go single for now just so that you can make it easier on yourself without having to worry about people popping in but multiplayer then create a server name, choose whatever you like. I like to do what format I'm going to be playing and Digimon. And then I usually set digital 
and then you can set the number of players to max you can make it also invite only friends only or public which is very useful and you create the server which is very simple to, to do then you'll have none of the save loadout but what you're going to do is click automate it automatic you click that you're going to hit load we're going to hope that this loads up nice so you get a very nice board state and then you use the directional pads on your keyboard you can shift up down your viewing with the pointers and then if you use d you can go all the way to the left and then you can use the scroll feature on your mouse pad so this is how the cards will get imported they also have digivice with cards in them already for the colors so if you want to just build it free everything you can but what you have to do is make add new name it something usually i do my deck two we'll do my deck two just show you off a new then we're gonna control paste so we're gonna do control v and you exit out of that from the notepad and then you click import deck so over the digivice you click it i do have a few cards that i don't normally have in here so let's hope this loads up nice and neat. Oopsies. Well, that's fine. So if you have multiple decks up, you need to clear out your old one first before you do a new one. So make sure this is cleared out and emptied beforehand. So if you want to have just your new deck, you can, but this is not a bad Load out and hopefully import. Nope. So we'll control V again and we'll hit import. So this might not have everything because it's missing wizard mons unless they put wizard mon finally into the game, but we'll see what happens right here. So it's quite easy to simply import in. It's not that difficult, I promise you. You anybody can do this. So, with importing your deck. So we have the complete deck here. So what you can do is to what you want to do is separate the eggs and the stack first. So what we're gonna do is look for all the babies. Usually, what you could do is. Usually zero zero brings all the babies to the front. You're going to pull them out of the search bar. So that they're no longer in there. Now to make it easier on yourself so you don't have to remake this deck in the future. What I do is I hit F over the deck. It flips the deck over. Then I group it all together. And then what you do is hit save object into a root folder, which is personally designed. We'll name this BT6 purple loop. Name it whatever you want, just so it still saves there. So you can re-evaluate this file later and you don't have to import every time. So if you ever want to import the deck later, you go to objects, saved objects, and then you look for the deck of your choice. So we it usually by name. So we're going to take out. Where's our purple? Deck? R S T U. Nope. Purple, 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 purple. BT6 purple loop easy as pie. It comes right out. Now you have the deck. What we're going to do is bring the deck over here. If you hit the delete button over it it instantly deletes it. Make sure you return the old deck that isn't a clone back into the software because 
you don't and you try to import later, you will not have access to those cards. So then use A and D to shift back and forth. You use W and S to move forwards and backwards, similar to the directional pads. What you do then is take each one, two, three, four, five. So this makes it a lot easier by doing the eggs on top. You can easily take the five cards slowly off and then you can just take the full deck there. So while you're over and highlighted on this, you can hit R to shuffle the deck and shuffle the eggs. Do it a couple dozen times so the shuffler actually has a good spot. And before we even start, if I can tell you about that, let me do this real quick. Let's see, well, nope. That's the scene. We're gonna pull myself down here. So right up here, boys and girls, is the host and then anybody else that adds in. Anybody else that comes in, you need to normally right click them. You gotta promote them up, which allows you to have another player. So, so as need be, you can promote them from being a normal viewer so they can import their decks because if they can't they can't play so that makes it very difficult for them so what's really nice is they have dice here which you can hit r over and it shuffles it and then if you have multiple dice which are over here so you get all the dice you like hit r they jump up and it tells you the total. So we have a seven here, which isn't bad at all. Then you just take the dice out over there. Comes with a token so that you can keep track of memory. And then after you decide who goes first, you hit the recovery one, two, three, four, five. So this makes it automatic. And then you can draw one, two, three, four, five. Hitting the, going over your cards will spam them up in your hand just to see better. But hitting the alt button allows you to get a bigger picture. What's nice is there are ways of revealing your cards so that if a card needs to, you can see the top by a card effect and we can place them at the bottom of the deck instantaneously makes your life easier it's very automated it's really nice you can hatch draw a card since i don't have any way of digivolving we would instantly pass turn this isn't automated here to pass memory which is sad but eventually they might get to that point you can hit for security check to see what you have going on nothing instantly goes to the drop sadly but if you Play a Digimon, it comes out. You Digivolve, you have to hit the draw button. There's nothing, no way around it. But what really nice is you can just do what you need to. Draw. So that you get your stack built up. And then just Digivolve yet again. Draw. We have a bunch of jack raids which don't do us anything special here so that and just keep taking damage which is really nice so key things you want to know is how to rotate your cards left and right e one click and then q rotates it the other way e q r is the shuffle You can hit G to group and then F to flip. Those are the basic key components you need. And then highlighting them massively will help. 
group everything together and pull your cards out. Then you hit, you highlight everything and then hit group. Magically, they go into the down position if it's there. And then you can just bottom deck the whole thing. And that's how you reset it quite easily. And then flip. There's also multiple ways of doing it. But that's just a basic understanding on how to use the tabletop simulator. Hopefully you do understand everything. You will have a text bubble here where you can tell your opponent how many security checks and stuff like that if your opponent's not paying attention. But it's really useful. It lets you notify stuff up here. So everything's kind of useful for you. Just a lot of good stuff here. You can search the digivices. They don't really have anything special in here. They're just pre-con decks that you can just pull out. It also has the Diabormon token if you need it. It also has a corrupted card. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. So before I forget anything, I was supposed to mention about Digimon TCG 2020's Discord. This is how you get to play against other players. There's a section called Tabletop Simulator where you can enter and find opponents just by typing in Tabletop Sim, then looking for whatever version you want to play. You can hit and fight off against many players. It's a great way of starting out the game at a low budget entry. So guys, hopefully this helps out. The links for this Discord will be down below and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe.